the dollar itself hyperinflates, it's not like when the, when the United States exports inflation to another country that hoards dollars. It's not like that inflation goes away. It's still there, right? And when the, when the dollar hyperinflates at home, then what happens to all these other countries that were hoarding dollars the whole time and all of a sudden they see that the dollars aren't worth anything? Well, they reverse the process very quickly. They sell the dollars back to the United States and everything that was exported, all the inflation that's been exported just gets dumped onto U.S. shores very quickly and then the, the, the dollar hyperinflates to nothing like that we're going to see an explosion of commodity prices led by gold and silver if that happens. And it's going to happen. I don't know exactly if it's going to happen on April 15th, but it's going to happen soon. And, uh, and, and from then, from then we should be, uh, you know, well into the final printing round. Endgame investor Rafi Farber believes we are in the final phase of the global financial system and very close to a collapse that will wipe away hundreds of billions of dollars and devastate investors all around the world. During a recent interview with Liberty and Finance, Farber explains that the U.S. economy still seems resilient and strong despite the massive national debt, because being the issuer of the world's reserve currency allows you to ship off your inflation to countries with weaker currencies. But this can only happen for a short period, and if nothing is done to address the situation, things can and will quickly get out of hand. Unfortunately, decision makers in the United States have the erroneous view that the economy is strong and will stay strong for as long as money can be printed out of thin air and challengers brutally squashed. This is why nothing is being done to address the debt issue. In fact, it's only getting larger. According to data from the U.S. Treasury Department, the U.S. government currently makes about $12.2 billion but spends $17.7 .7 billion daily. If we continue at this rate, the $5.5 billion daily deficit will grow to $2 trillion in a year. This is why Rafi is certain that the U.S. is heading toward hyperinflation, a period when the dollar will become completely worthless because of the constant debasement caused by the U.S. government spending way more than it makes. During the interview, Rafi further explains that hyperinflation or any other significant economic collapse in the United States will be far more pronounced and devastating than if the same happens in any other country. This is because the U.S. is at the very top of the ladder already, and falling from such heights will be absolutely devastating. Farber gives the precise date he believes these events will begin, as well as the role precious metals like gold and silver will serve in a post-collapse world. We will now present clips from the interview. Please watch, share, and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. In the first part of the interview, Rafi discusses the end of the bank term funding program, the second phase of the banking sector, liquidity issues, and the impact of tax season. Two ways to look at this issue of the bank term funding program uh, ending. And it's going to end gradually. It doesn't end on, uh, in terms of the money being paid back, it's not all on one day, but most of it, or like maybe 60, 70% of it is going to be paid back by the end of April, something like that. So I think it's like 80, maybe $90 billion worth of it. And I think the total outstanding is like 165 billion. I might be a little off on those numbers, but it's in that ballpark. Uh, so one way to look at it in the narrow way, and that not not the way that I'm focusing on, is that oh, these banks they got bailed out, and now they're going to have to take these assets back onto their balance sheet, these underwater treasuries, right? And the treasuries that they sold to the Fed at par, uh, which means the, the amount that you would get on maturity for that for that bond. Uh, not on every single basis. I'm sure there are some that are worth more, but like in general, interest rates are higher now than they were in March 2023. So that means generally they'll be even more underwater now than they were when they had to be bailed out. So that could be a problem for those specific banks that were bailed out and we could start seeing problems in those specific banks again. But that's a that's like a narrow read. And there has been more liquidity lately and stocks are up and all these paper assets are up. So the, the, these banks that were bailed out have benefited from that. So I don't expect immediate trouble for the banks that have to buy back the assets. It's a more of a global concern in terms of uh, the monetary base itself that when all this cash is paid back into the Fed and, and the banks get back their underwater assets, the cash goes out of existence and then the, the monetary base shrinks. And from there, you could have problems in the plumbing, like uh, the, the the repo market, which is, uh, I think, uh, now it's like $1.8, $1.9 trillion a day. Uh, so we have the bank term funding program ending, plus um, we have the quarter turn, right, which is March 31st, or I think it's March 29th this year, or 28th, because the 31st is on a weekend, weekend, whatever, it's this week, 
right, the last day of the quarter, and there's typically a lot of book balancing, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of liquidity sucking going on from different directions because banks want to make their balance sheet look perfect for the quarter or as perfect as they can be for whatever regulatory reason. And then on top of that, we have April 15th tax day. And these are these are the very similar conditions to what led to the apocalypse of 2019. There was like there was a, there was taxes from September 15th. I think it was corporate tax day or one of the corporate tax days. There were other issues, but generally we saw like a, a three pronged liquidity drain coming in from different directions. And we're seeing we're going to be seeing that not exactly on the same day because tax day is April 15th and, and the quarter end is March 31st and the bank term funding program is going to gradually end. I'm not saying there's definitely going to be a liquidity in, a liquidity instance uh, or um, incident, but there's a good possibility of one. And if it doesn't happen in April, it's just getting worse because QT continues and they keep shrinking the monetary base anyway. So we're going to take a giant leap forward to the next liquidity crunch if we don't hit it somewhere sometime in April. One way or another, it's going to lead to more money printing. So it would be the first, it would be the, the most immediate sign that the next money printing round is going to happen like in the next day or two because you can't have 10% interest rates in the bowels of the monetary system for very long without everything tanking. So the, the Fed's going to print. And then we're going to see an explosion of commodity prices led by gold and silver if that happens. And it's going to happen. I don't know exactly if it's going to happen on April 15th, but it's going to happen soon. And, uh, and, and from, then, from then, we should be uh, you know, well into the final printing round. A liquidity crunch or liquidity crisis is a financial event characterized by a lack of short-term cash flow, which can lead to widespread defaults and even bankruptcies. Many asset prices drop significantly during a liquidity crunch as they did during the great financial crisis. This causes more challenges for organizations and businesses, adding to the already chaotic situation. Rafi predicts that the US is heading for a liquidity crunch that could begin as soon as April and force the Fed to resume another excessive money printing exercise. Rafi says if the crisis is as devastating as he expects, the central bank will print excessively to try to handle the situation, which will only exacerbate underlying problems further. The endgame investor is describing this as the final money printing, during which safe haven assets like gold and silver will be heavily sought after as investors rush to avoid the inevitable collapse. Let's get back to the interview. My argument on the hyperinflation of the dollar is that if it does, if it does hyperinflate, and there's no other currency to go to, right? There's, there, you, it's not like Americans can just get euros instead of the dollar and then start spending in euros or something like the vent like the um like the argentinians do they hoard dollars because they're trying to keep their savings and so they they kind of step down the pyramid from their dollar derivative which is the peso and going to the the the, the, the structural level below that in the inverted pyramid which is the dollar but you have in order to step off the mountain or step off the pyramid you have to go down a layer Right. Uh, otherwise, if you go up a layer, you're just going to get worse. The, the only thing down a layer from the U.S. dollar in the pyramid is gold and silver. That's the only thing that's there. There's nothing else uh, because it, in, this kind of this leads into the second question. Before I get to that, I mean, look, there's two possibilities here, just logically, either on on a hyperinflationary spiral the the uh, the Fed or the Treasury, whoever owns the, the gold reserves of the United States, could say something like, okay, we're freezing the gold price here. The dollar is going to be convertible again. It's going to be, let's say, $35,000 an ounce. And then we're just going to lock off, lop off three zeros and we're back to 1971. It's going to be the new dollar, gold back dollar. That, that would be very serious, uh, meaning that everyone who profits off of inflation, which is pretty much the entire world, would have to restructure their the global economy very, very quickly, which would lead to riots and 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 very uncomfortable things, especially in big cities. So in that in that case, the dollar will not die. It'll continue as a gold substitute, as a gold derivative, as it is now, and then you won't have hyperinflation because they'll just freeze the system. But that that's gonna it's gonna cause chaos, right? The other thing they could do is just keep printing because the the constant threat of financial collapse just keeps knocking on the door so they can't stop the printing and then and then they, they'll end up selling their gold reserves and then there there won't be any gold in the fed's balance sheet and then it will lead to hyperinflation at the end of the dollar completely i think that's the more healthy situation because that would also lead to chaos but it would at the same time it would allow us to really reset everything on our own terms on a decentralized way as opposed to a central power still having power within the currency even though it is gold backed 
um, they would still have some semblance of power, which I don't want them to have because I've seen what they've done. In terms of the second part of the question, uh, which is why hyperinflation would be faster in the United States <clears throat> rather than a drawn out process as we see in these other hyperinflationary countries, they have to think about what draws it out and why, and why is it that, that the dollar is stronger than other currencies so much? Um, not the historical reasons, but why mechanically is it? Well, because in, in Argentina or any hyperinflationary country, what do they do? Their currency hyperinflates and so they hoard dollars. And so the United States gets to export its inflation to other countries that hoard the dollars to, so they can have a functioning currency to go to to survive. At the same time, that is the mechanism that makes the dollar stronger than other currencies and prolongs the hyperinflationary process in the other countries because they're still using currency. So they convert it back into their local currency when they need to buy food and then they go back to dollars. And so the peso still has some kind of a value and it's like everything's hobbling along like, you know, like a zombie for years. But when the, the dollar itself hyperinflates, it's not like when the, when the United States exports inflation to another country that hoards dollars, it's not like that inflation goes away. It's still there, right? And when the, when the dollar hyperinflates at home, then what happens to all these other countries that were hoarding dollars the whole time and all of a sudden they see that the dollars aren't worth anything? Well, they reverse the process very quickly. They sell the dollars back to the United States and everything that was exported, all the inflation that's been exported just gets dumped onto U.S. shores very quickly and then the, the dollar hyperinflates to nothing like that. I don't really know how fast it's going to be. I'm not saying it's going to be in seconds, but it's not going to be a, like years of drawn out 30, 40, 50 percent annual inflation. It's going to it's going to go up, up, up. And then just like, wham, it's going to be it. It's going to be done. As we rapidly approach the end game, Rafi counsels that the best thing you can do for your investment portfolio is to get out of the system and stack enough gold and silver. According to the renowned analyst, silver will serve you during the end game when the dollar and other fiat currencies become useless and gold will help you rebuild after the end game. He further explains that alternative assets like crypto are dollar derivatives, while the dollar is a gold derivative. This is why Rafi is certain that people will quickly return to spending silver when the collapse begins. Please share your thoughts on Rafi's predictions in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.